Okay, so it's quite a mild day today, so I thought I'd do a little bit of an update on the uh, dosing setup that I started. So this is a Dubao DP3 three-channel dosing pump. Um, I'll put a link in the description on how to set these up. Um, it's pretty straightforward, but there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube that show you how to set the different channels up. Basically, hit that middle button, it'll bring up the date and the time. And then you can go into set program mode, and like that. And then you can select which pump you want to. Set up so you can set that for how many times a day and things like that. So that's the basis of how to run a pump. What you need to know about setting these types of doses up is where these pipes connect up. If you get air in these lines, um, what can happen is when they're new, these heads tend to hold the seal quite well and they will there's a three headed roller in there and they will pinch the sides of this tube stopping any water travelling backwards and forwards through them. What tends to happen though over time as they start to get worn is you can get backwards and forwards um, siphoning effect so either if you were coming off this head and going up higher then you can get the water drop back down into the container so you're not getting the dose that you want or if like me you're running dosing lines down here that are below the level of the water in here you can get forward uh, siphoning where you can basically empty the entire contents of the container into the pond which obviously you don't want to do what I have done with these containers though is um, where I've mixed the tap water conditioner in here um, I've diluted that down with boiled um, filtered water so what's come through the big blue and then boiled it up that's to keep it nice and sterile as much as I can in there um, and all that contains in three litres of mix is enough to dose the entire pond once now obviously you don't need that much um, to just dechlorinate anything left in the trickle in for metals or for chlorine um, what it means is if anything goes wrong if the doser goes on the fritz, shorts out and just runs and empties that entire container into the pond, the worst thing that can happen is it's had one full dose, which is going to be okay. Uh, same with sodium bicarbonate, in there there's enough to raise the pond by one dkh, and one dkh in there. So if the worst happened there and it dumped the entire contents into there, into the pond, that would be enough to raise the kh of the pond by one uh, dkh which is a, a safe level again to raise the pond by in one day but to prevent these from um, siphoning backwards or forwards um, what I've done is to connect these up to start off with drill the hole in there put a quarter inch John Guest bulkhead connector in most of these with a little elbow on just to make connecting them up a bit easier but if I open this up inside and don't forget to drill you see around there there's a little breather hole so if you seal these off these will just get sucked in as they get dosed so you need a little breather hole in there to allow air in as they get as the dosing liquid gets taken out but to stop these siphoning backwards and forwards what I've got there connected into the bottom is a check valve so what that does is it prevents water from draining back down in the, the dosing solution but because it's uh, spring loaded and it makes a good seal it also stops forward siphoning because you need a reasonable amount of force the pump driving to actually draw the liquid into it so uh, I'll tighten that back up later so that it won't forward dose if um, the tubing in here breaks down and allows water to go through but Nine times out of ten these will pinch off and these will make a good seal with a three headed roller but when they do wear down sometimes they can allow a bit of water pass and it doesn't take a lot 
slowly dripping one drip at a time to completely empty that container. So that's the same for this one and this one. They've all got little check valves just set in the bottom there just to stop any backwards and forwards siphoning as an extra fail safe. But the biggest fail safe is not to have enough liquid in here at a concentration that could cause any damage in the pond. So all that is in there is one dose, one full dose for the pond, which being dosed for the 300 litres that I'm replacing every day, um, that'll be about a month's worth of dosing there um, for the entire pond, but at a safe level. Same with the uh, sodium bicarbonate solution. In that container, enough for one DKH, and that on for another one DKH. If that siphons into the pond, it'll be completely safe. Two DKH, a little bit high, unlikely to cause massive problems. The fish might get a bit peed off for a bit, but it's not going to wipe the entire pond out. And that's something you need to consider if you're thinking of dosing anything, whether it be into a marine tank or into a pond or anywhere. Is if you keep the concentrations low enough, so they'll last long enough but not cause critical harm if they do end up getting dosed into the pond. I mean, anything could happen. These things go on the fritz occasionally and the motor will short out or something in the control work will break down and they'll just run for whatever reason. And it's just to protect against that potential uh, outcome. But that's it quite simply. Check valve in there, bulkhead connectors. This is some Interpet uh, Silicon Airline. Um, it's quite reasonably robust. There are some cheaper ones out there. I bought some uh, cheaper silicon airline, but it wasn't very good. Um, but also, what I will show is inside this connector here, you'll see a little bit of clear tubing sticking out. And what that is, is to make a, a good tight seal on the John Guest fitting, there is some 3 16th beer line pipe inside there. So that fits up inside the silicon tubing and then you push the whole lot into the John Guest fitting and that makes a good airtight and watertight seal. Uh, at the moment I've got these set to dose. I think the, the tap water conditioner is 3 litres, um, dosing 100 ml a day. That's diluted down just 150 ml of API tap water conditioner for my 2,500 gallons. Diluted down so that it only does 100 ml a day that's 150 ml of tap water conditioner in 2.85 litres of boiled purified water. Um, the sodium bicarbonate is just a 4 litres mix with um, about 300 grams of sodium bicarbonate. Uh, that's about 80 grams a litre which makes a good stock solution so it uh, doesn't um, settle out, it will stay in solution. And, doesn't block up the dosing tubes because if you get have powder sitting in there it can sometimes block these tubes up and that's enough to dose the pond. At the moment I'm dosing about not really a lot this time of year there's not a massive demand on the um, pond with feeding uh, so at the moment these are only pumping in between them they're doing it uh, alternately that's doing 12 o'clock and midnight and then 1 o'clock 2 o'clock 3 o'clock 4 o'clock 5 o'clock and they're just dosing 10 mil at the moment which is going to last a good long while. In the summer that will probably go up a bit and I'll adjust the dosing to maintain the uh, KH which is easy enough to measure with that. It takes about it takes a minute to do a KH test um, and keep an eye on my KH levels so I can see what uh, I can monitor then what they're dropping down to and whether I need to increase or decrease how many mils of the solution that I'm dosing and that's basically it. Um, I wouldn't recommend uh, this to anybody that hasn't run the doser before or to be very careful if they do. Um, there are cases where you read online on reef tanks where they've wiped out their entire uh, reef tank by having something go wrong either with the doser itself or with the way that they've set it up that the pipes can siphon forward or backwards and they haven't put proper water quality check valves in there not just a little airline check valves they're not designed for water proper um, RO style check valves in there that take a fair bit of force in order to let uh, the fluid flow which is enough 
um, these pumps will manage that, uh, but it stops any potential for backwards and forwards siphoning. And then always remember not to have too much, too high a concentration of liquid there to cause any problems in the pond, should the worst happen. And that's how I set my dosing up. Um, when you do set it up, you do need to calibrate these pumps. There is a setting for calibration where you'll go in there and it'll say to correct pumps where you'll start the pump off and then measure the the outlet from it. So you do need a decent uh, measuring cylinder like this. This is what I use for my um, medications like um, if I was dosing uh, formalin or if I'm using hydrogen peroxide after using PP. I measure out in this because it's a little bit more accurate. You can see individual millilitres there going all the way up to 100. But when you set these up, most times with the Jabal one especially, um, you'll have to pump 100 mils into there, start and stop the pump so that it can uh, calibrate to your setup and you get an exact precise, do precise dose then. And that's the, um, the setup. I might swap this one over to something else other than sodium bicarbonate. Um, I do have a couple of ideas for that, but I'll see how I go. The ones I've got are not really needed this time of year anyway. Um, it'd be more for when the feeding's at a higher level. So the other reason that I swapped from, uh, I was going to use Kasuri dechlorinator in there um, but what it didn't have was something that I wanted um, is what the API tap water conditioner contains um, when you have a look at their website you'll see that um, not their stress coat only the tap water conditioner contains a substance called EDTA um, terasodium salt and what that does is that's a, a metal cleating agent for anything that gets past my bone char and gets into the pond because my tap water is absolutely rotten um, that's a really good cleating agent specifically for metals like lead, copper and zinc whereas sodium thiosulfate which is all Kasuri dechlorinator is with a little bit of blue dye in it um, that will detoxify some metals to a degree, but not as much as um, EDTA um, terasodium salt will. Which uh, the only um, decoronator I found with that in it is the API tap water conditioner. Um, this just does a ridiculous amount of gallons dechlorinating. 288,000 uh, litres, so that will probably last me a couple of years at least. Um, and that's the one that I'm using in here specifically for I mean there's very little chlorine getting into my pond I'll get a slight reading um, after my second carbon uh, occasionally um, when the bed needs restratifying um, but it's mainly for any metals and things like that that might be getting past and into my pond to detoxify those more than it's being used as a dechlorinator um, but that's the reason that I've chosen the API tap water conditioner is it contains EDTA and all the other ones that I've looked at either don't mention it or they don't all they contain is sodium thiosulfate which detoxifies some metals but not as much as uh, and certainly not completely uh, as much as EDTA will um, I'll put links to the um, website for API so it shows the um, MSDS data sheet showing exactly what's in it. So one of the reasons I decided to start using uh, a dechlorinator and then dosing it regularly was um, I got a little bit of chlorine come past the carbon before I changed it. Um, only sort of like five, ten parts per billion. Uh, nothing that should really be that bad. But I was seeing some um, bad behaviour in the fish there's a little bit of clamping going on a little bit of flashing not very much but um, there's definitely something wrong so I tested the um, water going into the pond and that was showing a very very low level of uh, chlorine 
or about five parts per billion. So I changed the carbon out, restratified that bed. Um, but in between that time, I added some sodium theosulfate um, on its own into the pond, and I noticed uh, a distinct improvement in the fish themselves, in the behaviour, and also the mucus coating on a couple of the fish, the kajaku particularly, seemed to clean up a lot. Um, even though I tested the pond and I was getting zero parts per billion on the HANA total chlorine test kit, the ultra low range, um, even though I was showing absolutely no chlorine in the pond and only a tiny trace was getting by on the big blue, bit of sodium theosulfate in there and I kept putting it in for a few days even after I'd um, put the big blue back online with zero parts of chlorine going in I did notice an improvement in some of the fish so that made me think that maybe some of the metals that are not that easy to test for like zinc or copper or cadmium lead all these things that are in your water supply might have been getting through to the pond past the uh, bone char stage even in small amounts and was negatively impacting the fish so I decided at that point then that I was going to try um, just dosing little amounts each day done that for a week seen an improvement um, so as I was going to set the dose up for bicarbonate anyway um, I decided to get a three-headed doser um, I mean these you can pick up really cheap on eBay I got that for like it was 15 pounds or something like that I mean, it was basically brand new in the box hardly I don't think you can think it, it was used um, and like I say if you do these little modifications by putting the check valve in that makes these uh, a bit more solid and a bit more reliable um, because the pump heads aren't the most expensive in the world but then again it's not a 300 pound uh, three channel doser it, they're, they're cheap even new they're only sort of like I think you can get the three headed one from Pond Solutions for like 39 pound delivered so that's when I decided to start dosing the tap water conditioner, just enough for what I'm adding to the pond, which is about 300 litres a day. So it's only a low level amount of uh, dechlorinator that I'm adding, mainly for the metals removal, I think, than anything else, because I'm not showing any chlorine in the pond whatsoever, but it definitely does make a difference dosing a small amount into the pond. Um, I've seen improvement in, in some of the fish, you know, um, the Kajaka was looking a little bit uh, clouded in his uh, mucus, it was looking a little bit uh, dusty, a little bit opaque and um, that cleared that right up and he's, uh, he looks a lot better on it and there's a little bit uh, better behaviour in the fish. And not something you can put your finger on that, that exactly but I did notice uh, an improvement in the fish in their activity levels and they just seemed a little bit more relaxed and happy so um, for the small cost that it's going to be to dose uh, tap water conditioner. I think that big um, 3.7 litre, 3.8 litre tub that I got was about £50 on Amazon and that will last like a couple of years at least because I'm only dosing a small amount diluted in um, 3 litres of water. Um, I would boil the water first though because um, sodium theosulfate I think can um, get broken down by there's a kind of bacteria that lives on it I remember there's something on Mankey Sankey's website um, when he recommends to make mix up sodium theosulfate to use boiled water um, because they, it can be broken down by a bacteria. Um, but that's the reason for it basically. I was getting a little bit through on the big blues um, so I decided to add some dechlorinator and metal detoxifier to the pond uh, and I noticed an improvement in my fish. So I'll keep putting it in, it's not doing any harm, I'm only putting small amounts in. Um, I think this is dosing, yeah, I said, um, it's dosing 100 mil a day in four, uh, six hourly doses of 25 mil. So at 12 o'clock at night, six o'clock, 12 o'clock midday, and then six in the evening, four doses a day of 25 mil a dose. But that is diluted down of 150 mils of uh, tap water conditioner into 2.85 litres of boiled uh, purified water.